as you can see, Janet is no longer in the engine compartment. All right, we're off for round two of the vaccine campaign. It's very sad. So, uh, to begin with, we've taken the electrical connections all off, batteries are out, and now I'm just draining the fluids from the engine to make it lighter, and then we're going to take these auxiliary parts off, so I've just started taking the salt water pump off, we'll take the um, alternator off, we'll probably look at disconnecting the transmission, and that way the engine will be as light as possible and as easy to uh, lift out and take all the belts and pipes off, obviously, so that's kind of what we're working on now. Oh no. Oh, oh. All right, so we had Mario the mechanic out to help uh, pull some of the parts off the engine because he's much faster at it than us and um, yeah, it works out much better to have him do it. So we have all the pipes off, the, the alternator, um, the cool, the um, like coolant heat exchanger tank and the heat exchanger, um, the salt water pump we've removed. Um, basically all the auxiliary parts are now off of the engine. Um, and so the next step is taking the engine mounts apart and disconnecting the transmission and we should then be in a position to actually get the engine out. So yeah, we're basically there. So you can see Janet is a skinny, skinny little engine with no transmission attached. So now all the bolts are undone. So Janet is just resting on mounts now. Um, the transmission is disconnected. You can see that she looks like a very skinny little engine. Our original plan was to get her taken out right now, basically. Uh, we were going to get a crane to come and lift her out. Unfortunately, uh, the crane has been sold to a new company in the last few months, and the new company charges about three times as much as the original company charged for the crane. So um, what we thought was going to be around kind of $75 is now like $280. So what we're going to do is use the boom to just get Janet to basically where I'm sitting. So she'll sit here and this is where she'll live until the new engine comes. And then when the new engine comes, we'll just lift Janet out, put the new one in and only pay once for the crane instead of having it come twice. Um, which means we'll have enough space to clean the engine compartment because that's the important thing that we want to do before the new engine comes. So that's where we're at now and hopefully today... Janet will be here instead of there, which will be really awesome. We attached a pulley system to the boom to slowly lift Janet and swing her forward. You may be wondering why we don't just use this system to get the engine out of the boat entirely. Essentially, it comes down to not wanting to hang a dead weight from the boom off the side of the boat while on stands 10 feet above the ground. Physics is not really on our side, and if you YouTube a video of this being done in the water, you'll see just how much it moves a boat. Getting Janet moved forward took a bit of convincing. The rust alone from the engine mounts were holding her in place and Ronnie had to use a bit of muscle to get her going. As you can see, Janet is no longer in the engine compartment. Whee! All right, we're off for round two of the vaccine campaign. Um, we're basically just heading down to the exact same spot, um, but four days later, with the idea that everybody who heard about it because we've done the campaign and has now asked about whether we're coming back can come and get their dogs vaccinated today. Because so much of it's word of mouth, it's worth going back a few days later and just kind of getting the, the stragglers and um, getting all those last few doggies vaccinated. In an ideal world, dogs are meant to be vaccinated either yearly or once every three years, depending on the type of vaccine. However, many studies suggest that the protection from even just one vaccine can last for many years. 
So by protecting the puppies during the most vulnerable stages of their lives, we are hopefully protecting them forever. Wow. <laughs> It was well worth coming back just to vaccinate a few more doggies in Villa del Sol. A big thank you to our patrons and donators for making these campaigns possible and helping us save so many dogs. This may not look like a surgical suite, but it was our makeshift area for castrating the hotel cat Coco. We gave him his anaesthetic injection in the confines of our bathroom to ensure we wouldn't end up with a drugged escapee. We're going to go check our little patient. I don't like doing my own, my own pants, even though you're not mine, technically. It's actually like very dirty. <laughs> We were castrating Coco not only to prevent fatherhood, but also to reduce some naughty male cat behaviours such as roaming and spraying around the house. You may notice that it's never truly quiet here in Mexico. The light squeaking you hear in the background is the ever-present tortilla wheel, turning from 4am until 5pm every single day. Within 24 hours, Coco was back to his old self. Katya! What are you doing? The beast is out! Now we just got to clean her residence for the new one. You can see too, look how rusted. This is where the transmission joins onto. And it's, um, yeah, extraordinarily rusty. Under the engine, we discovered one of the compartments had been filled with epoxy that had lifted over the years, allowing a sludge of engine oil, fuel, and water to accumulate. Weirdly, this mix seemed to protect the aluminium below it quite well. Maybe I, maybe I cut a big, uh, a big, a big... We chipped away at it until we finally got it all out. It was a very messy job. The dirt and scratches, etc., have begun. 
basically what we've been doing at the moment is spraying the area with a degreaser then hosing it out spray with degreaser hose it out and you can see we've made pretty good progress it's like much much cleaner than it was we pulled up all the epoxy from this area then just been cleaning this area in particular has pretty bad pitting um this area is not as bad, better, better, and it makes sense because this is where everything pools. But the good news is part of it's even just from the cleaning has already gone through. So one, it's good news because we found that out, but even better news that when Dad and Will were here, they preempted that that was going to be really bad. And the plate we got welded over this battery compartment, we actually extended back. Uh, knowing that probably there were more holes, but we couldn't get to that area because of the engine. So we actually extended those plates all the way back, which means the areas with the worst pitting already actually have a plate welded below them. So if we go through, we're not uh, making holes and chuffed anymore and we don't have to get any welding done on the outside. So that's really good news. So um, yeah, basically the plan for now is to keep cleaning. And then it'll be kind of like what we did in the tanks where we sand, get the pitting up, and um, then we are, uh, what well, we're, kind of planning on doing most likely obviously we assess 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 is um filling these two areas um with epoxy uh on it, like well epoxy over the bigger holes and then possibly do like a bilge paint like what we did in this area um because that's where water and stuff accumulates and then this area we can just basically leave as is since the pitting's really not bad there um no worse than you know just the normal kind of like surface unevenness that we have in some other areas so yeah but it's like 30, let me have a look, where are we at? Oh, only just right on 30 degrees with 80% humidity. So it's um, pretty tough work. We only have this tiny little plug-in fan keeping us, um, keeping us going. But yeah, it feels good to have Miss Janet out. And I think we're progressing much quicker than we did last time. So we're kind of being a bit more aggressive with the cleaning and stuff. And um, with any luck in a couple of days, five days, we'll have the area cleaned and burnt out. I might be being optimistic. We'll see. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed this episode. If you'd like to help us continue our mission to vaccinate the dogs of Puerto Madero, become a patron. Until next time, stay chuffed, everybody.